When you think of classic horns, you think of the Martin Committee trumpet, of course, but I will tell you, I far prefer the Martin Handcraft Imperial, and we just got this one in for sale. So stay tuned to this video. I'll tell you a little bit more about this particular one. Hey everybody, it's Trent Austin from Austin Custom Brass. I hope you're having a fantastic day out there today. Thank you so much for your incredible support over the holiday season. Um, we appreciate you so very much. And uh, we want to just, just say um, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year to you wherever you're watching this video. This horn is just fantastic. This was a recent acquisition from um, a customer who was upgrading to a different horn. And uh, we decided to uh, buy it. And I kept it for a while. I was thinking I'd added in my collection. I've had a, a few really great uh, handcraft imperials in my um, arsenal, but I just can't seem to replace. This is horn is right underneath some of my truly elite horns like Copernicus and others. So the Martin handcraft imperial. Later on, Martin, after the World War II, they um, called their student models imperial trumpets. So there's a lot of confusion here, but pre- Martin Committee and pre-Handcraft Committee, there was the Handcraft Imperial. This horn was made uh, originally in the early 30s. It was a bottom sprung design. And um, this is the late 30s model. As you can see, it has a much more modern valve block, as you uh, can see right there. It has the classic reverse lead pipe and the classic Martin Bell. This is, so there's also folklore when it's um, involved with uh, dating Martin trumpets. Uh, so they'll see the lion here. I don't know if you could see that in the camera. This isn't my good camera, but AC has a 38. Now, some people were like, oh, well, that's a different style bell. No, that's actually the year that this horn was made. Later on in 1939, they put an M uh, between the lion's paws. So the Handcraft Imperial is the nickel trim version later on called the Deluxe in the Martin Committee line. But you can see there's nickel here, nickel here, nickel top balusters, nickel trim, and nickel outer slides. Thick and really beautiful sounding horn. Um, this horn is the two bore. Two meaning it's a medium step bore. So at the top of the tuning slide leg, it's 0.438 if you measure it, but then it slowly graduates into 453 in the second valve casing. Um, very, the exact same board that the Martin Committee uh, two board is as well. So it's just an awesome trumpet, super versatile. Um, this one uh, has actually pretty good compression. Uh, with Burt Bio 3, it's actually very good. Um, so let me play a little bit. You heard a little bit of, um, I didn't know what time it was. I'll just play a little Arbins right now. This is uh, unedited raw, not on my great ribbon mic, but on a decent ribbon mic here at the shop about a foot away from it. One thing that you want to know is that this horn, in my opinion, is far more versatile than the committee. They uh, ended up making the committee's flare a little different here. And this horn is much more versatile. It can work in a section. It doesn't have the traditional intonation tendencies that a committee does. Normal committees, the second line um, G is very sharp and the 
uh, Concert A440 is uh, really flat. So let me show you these. these they're a little bit um, skewed versus a like a contemporary trumpet, like an Adams or a Bach or a Shoggle. But it's much better than a uh, traditional committee. <laughs> It's just an awesome, awesome trumpet. And if you put a commercial mouthpiece in, it will actually brighten up. Uh, a little known fact is that the Woody Herman trumpet section actually played Martin committees. And there was a point in time where Maynard played a Martin committee in between, um, he had a Bach, then he had a Martin for a brief period. He was probably getting endorsement of this, of um, some, from some band. And then he went to the 28B, which then went to his famous 38B constellation. So um, let me put in a commercial mouthpiece and it will zip. This is a, a 10 CV in our line. And you can sit on that A, and the A is not going to fight you back. Because a lot of people think smaller bore horns have tons of resistance. It's a friendly resistance, and you learn how to play the resistance, even with a tight mouthpiece and a tight back bore, into a, a medium bore trumpet. It actually feels really, really good. Um, so that's a quick tour. And in terms of cosmetics, there's been some work on this back bell bow. You can feel it with your hand. Um, when we got it, the lead pipe was bent down, so we had um, our techs at Heritage uh, do an amazing job on that. Um, it's not; it doesn't have the original uh, stop rods on the bottom. This one might not have come with that. No, I can actually see it. So they probably took them off, and it only has one screw to the uh, slide. The valves themselves. Let me show you. They show some surface wear. You can see that. Remember, this horn is from 1938, but like I said, with Burp Bio 3, it is great. And if you want to play a smoky ballad on this horn, I'll make sure I put the mouthpiece in right. Check this out. I'm going to play one more thing on it. And again, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, or as certain channels say, smash the like button. Just a great horn. That's a tour of this Martin Handcraft Imperial. There's always a link in the description. Hit that, check it out. There'll be plenty of more pictures and information on that. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Stay up to date with us. Keep on keeping on and happy trumpeting to all of you. Cheers.